Talk a little bit about the language barrier, because I'm curious, there's a lot of coaching going on in English, and I'm wondering how much you feel like they're picking up. Well, you, you want to believe that they're picking up everything. The funny part about that is even coaching guys that are American and have spoken English their whole lives, they don't pick up half of what you tell them sometimes either. So the bottom line is about the game being as universal as possible. Uh, it may be a different language as far as what things are called, but the action is usually the same. So we speak a certain type of language even in the league. It may be a, an action where one team calls it one thing, another team calls it another thing. But the bottom line is knowing the action, knowing what it is, being able to understand what what the code is for each situation and each action. And that's really all it's about. All of the intricacies, obviously, you do need a, a translator or someone to try to help with that type of stuff. But all in all, when you're talking about just learning certain tools in the game, it's, the game is really universal. Um, are there any fundamentals that when, when some of the European players get to the NBA, you feel like, wow, they just haven't learned this and they really need to catch up? Well, um, I think that the European players are really, they may be ahead of the game as far as the fundamental part of it. A lot of the times, and I played in Europe and I've spent a lot of time in Europe, the bottom line is a lot of those guys, for the majority, everybody doesn't have the same type of athleticism as, as a lot of the American players. Everybody doesn't have the same type of ability to run fast, jump high, those type of things. So they had to really learn fundamentally what to do, how to attack a situation. Also, with the rules being a little bit different in, in Europe, it makes it even even tougher when guys can kind of just stand and hang out in the paint. And if you can't shoot and you're in a lot of trouble, you got to figure out how you're going to get to the basket. So I think that they have learned uh, fundamentally a lot of things, maybe ahead of some of the, some of the guys in, in America. But the hard part is being able to catch up with the speed. And, you know, those fundamentals can only take you but so far. You have to be able to catch up with the speed of guys here. You have to be able to catch up with the speed of, of also their knowledge of what's going on. And for me, I think these guys, especially the guys in Europe as a whole, have been, have been really good at, at, at catching up with that. Um, there's so many European players in the NBA now, so many foreign players in the NBA now. I mean, it's, I remember and I, when I played in the NBA, it was, I don't know, maybe 20 guys, something like that. Now it's 100. So... The game has just grown globally, and, and it's a joy to see. A lot of the uh, European players tend to be very team-oriented. They like to pass. Do you think that there's a soccer influence growing up uh, that influences how they play the game? Well, I hope so. Um, I mean, I know from my time playing in the NBA and also playing in Europe, I love the, the influence of soccer. I love the influence of the passing. I love the influence of, you know, what we call in, I guess what they call in Canada, the hockey assist, where there's a pass, which leads to another pass, which leads to the actual basket. Um, those are the type of things that I think that, that as, a, as, a, as a country we've grasped a hold of and, you know, have, have tried to take off with it as far as just, just understanding that team basketball, team play is, is, is a good thing for the game.